All right, it's a beautiful Sunday morning and I'm into work to uh, upgrade this uh, Dell server to um, SSD drives from the existing 3.5 inch drives, um, normal, edged, normal drives we've got in at the moment. So let's just take a quick look at what we've got here. So we've got these new uh, SSD drives, these are 800 meg drives, whereas the existing ones, if I just pull them out the uh, front at the moment, These are normal um, normal drives, these are 300 meg, so we have a bit of a size increase as well, as well as a speed increase. Um, that's going to cause a bit of a problem later. I've done one of these servers already and there is a bit of an issue. A um, couple of bits we need to replace. I haven't got the thing out at the moment, hold on. We need to replace these backplane cables, okay, because we've got to replace the controller as well. The battery, you might as well ba replace the battery as well. And uh, let me just grab the controller box of bits here, there we go, and this is your handed, bear with me, and replacing the controller card as well, the existing controller card that's in here is a 6i, this is the H7 controller which has got a much faster throughput and that's what we need for this, so just hold on a second, let me just uh, mount the camera up and we can take it from here. Alright, as I already mentioned, we've actually backed up the uh, service twice already. Very, very important you back the drives up. Um, you are going to be changing controller cards and uh, later on the drives. The method that I use to actually restore them um, is not what I actually saw mentioned anywhere. I don't know anybody else that has done this as you're doing this video. Uh, so to open up the case, release the catch, get rid of that. Very nicely thought out these Dell servers. Um, you've got this plate here which basically and a row of fans here which directs the airflow through the back of the PC case and this shield here basically directs, I'm going to take this out now, directs the airflow across the memory and across the uh, two processors we've got in this server. Right, so this is all fairly irrelevant. I'm going to show you how to replace this controller card. Controller card's tucked down here. Uh, just if I tip that back up a bit. There we go. That's the controller card. Now, first we're going to need to do is pull this batteries over here, and you notice all the cables are rooted nice and neatly through the case. First thing we're going to do is pull the battery connection out. On a second, if you drop the camera back down. At least from this battery, and I'm going to take the battery out of this little holder here. And just disconnect the battery that gets rid of the power, making sure we don't mix this up with our new one. So let's put that nice and in the way. The bag for the moment. Okay. And then it just just cut it the other end from there, leave those cables loose. We can leave the back plane cables plugged in at the moment, I can do this bit last. Now to access these cables, they see they run through the back here. Um, and all tied up. And you can't actually do it because these, this fan unit is actually in the way. So you just take this fan unit out. So, release these two blue clips here. Pull that. And the fans are out. Okay. Now we've got this little access to this channel here that's run these cables through. So the first thing we're going to do is it's like a little clip on here, so just release the clip and slide this little bit of plastic out. So now we can pry these cables out. So it's the bottom of the battery, so just pull this one out. Gets rooted through here as well. Just going to pull the, the battery cable removed. It's not the same battery and this is exactly the same cable as before, but they've sent us a new kit, so we want to replace everything here. Uh, just checking my memories in properly. Next thing we're going to do is disconnect these. Uh, set these cables that connect up to this back plane here. They are actually labelled SASA and SASB and I'm going to take the new ones. I'm 
Now the new ones actually aren't labelled in the same way. So what you need to do is check because they're ever so slightly different lengths. You can see that from there. Okay, so there's that second. Then to replace, to remove these, so just the little clips on the side. That's cable B, we're going to leave that plugged in for a moment. That's cable A, and again, we're just going to move that out of the way. Now you should actually replace this controller card. Now there's little clips on the side here that hold it in, and it just slides straight back out. So, here we go. Release those clips. And sort of jiggle the card around. And that's the... Uh, Hold a card removed. Okay. Let's find a nice little anti state bag for that. Is that a new controller? Okay, this is the H7, sorry, H700 controller. Get inside these plastic rails. In and just clip that into place and just also check that this rises in place as well. Okay, that's now in. So now we're going to replace these cables. So I'm going to take out A first. This is a completely different connector on the end of these than there is to these new ones. Okay. I used to further this away so we need the longest cable. So these has got marked a controller on the side. You can see that there. So I'm just gonna see which one of these is the longest. That one's the longest. So there's A there. There's A written on the controller card. So quickly clip that in. into the back plane. And the same with this one, this is B, so I'm just going to release that from the back there. This cable right out of the way now. Once again, control side, back plane side. So plug that into there. Plug that into there. Next stage is the battery. So, replace the battery. And again, this is marked as. I don't know where you can see that controller side, battery side. So, plug that. Only going one way to the controller. Okay, so I'm not actually going to connect that at the moment. What we're going to do now is route these cables back through this uh, channel as neatly as possible and seal this back up. So the battery one just shot that in there. All the way through at the bottom. So the back point in, I'm trying to make it as neat as possible. It's probably Dell Engineers screaming at the screen now, saying it's not the right way to do it, but it seems to work. So I'm going to put this little thing, these little plastic clips and stuff back in so it'll hold everything in place. One end in, the other end just slips out. So, a bit of patience. Right. 
them too far forward. That's it. Like that clips back into place. Put the battery away out of the way. Took these cables out of the way as well, so otherwise it will foul up on the top of the lid when we're trying to put that back in. It's not put the battery back in yet. Just going to drop the fans back in. So we'll know that everything is nice and neat and out of the way. I don't need to take anything else apart or I'll get the battery back up. Uh, so, that's it. Put those cables in there as neat as possible. Now there's little posts in there that this needs to rest on. Place. Twist it tie from there. Now connect the battery back up. Put that placement battery back into there. Okay. That's the hardware done. Now I'm not going to replace the drives just yet. Okay, I'm going to leave the drives in because I'm going to boot it back up with this new controller for the next stage. Um, so let me just get the lid and stuff back on, get it uh, connected with the monitor and keyboard, mouse and then we can take the next stage from there. Okay. Right, a bit louder now, so just booting back up again. So just wait for this to go through its usual tests and stuff like this. Move this around so you can see more of the screen than the can of anything else. There we go. That's all this memory test and stuff that this probably first boots up. So, I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to change the BIOS or anything like this at the moment. On this, I'm just going to let it uh, see if it can boot up. Um, it should recognise the two drives in there because we haven't actually changed the uh, we've just changed the rate of control, we haven't actually changed the rate of configuration. And I believe that's safe to the BIOS and not to the actual card. So it should actually pick it up. It always takes a lot longer when you're waiting for it. to the bar stage. Once this bar is coming up here, this is a further set of BIOS tests, once this comes up here, you can actually just tap on any key on the keyboard and it will bypass the memory test and actually go into the actual BIOS boot up. So I'm just letting that boot up and just move that. It's actually found virtual drives. So we just let go to the next boot up stage. Now what I'm expecting is this for this to fail once it's got uh, to actually do the uh, Windows boot up. So we just let that go through. Now the reason it probably failed is because we've changed the controller card and Windows doesn't know about the new controller card yet and it's trying to boot from it. So it can cause a bit of an issue. Let's go to the Windows boot.
Now what I had on the previous server when we did this, um, I'd actually put the other drives into that stage and done some other stuff, which is why I'm doing it slightly differently this time, was actually I got a um, invalid boot error message, which should come up in a minute. Uh, if it's going to do exactly the same thing, so I'll let you go through the Windows boot up. Yeah, you get this straight away, you get this message come up. Uh, problem needs to restart. Uh, inaccessible boot device. And that's because we've replaced the controller card. Now, what we'll let it do is actually go through the boot up sequence um, three times. So on the third time, it comes up with the repair utility. So, just let me go through again. Uh, I'm not going to wait you watch all that, I'm just going to stop it until we get to the uh, third boot. Because it takes a while, obviously, if you've seen just to boot up each time. Okay, this is the second reboot coming through now. So we should get the same uh, blue screen again this time. On the third reboot, it actually automatically goes into recovery mode, which is what we want, that's why I didn't reboot up three times. So just wait for this to go through. It seems to take much longer when you're actually waiting for it, rather than just letting it go through. Yep, same error message again needs to restart, so we just let that restart again, and we'll come back to you in a second. So we go, it's booting back up again, third time, it's going to go into recovery mode there. Come, if you just missed this, it came up with a little message, scrolls along the bottom, telling it's going to load recovery mode. So let's just see this boot up slightly differently now. Give it a second. Okay, comes up with the troubleshooting thing. You can continue, which is just going to reboot and give you exactly the same loop again, then you end up getting this stuck thing where you have to re reboot three times. Troubleshooting, turn off the PC. We're going to go to the uh, troubleshooting. Okay. Now, I spent ages going through various different options, booting it into off a Windows boot disk, trying to recover this, trying to get all this out, and found the quickest way of doing this, this is what I'm going to share this one doing this video for you. So I'll put a note in the actual thing which you can skip straight to this. Go to the um this doesn't work on this desk. Go to the startup settings. Yeah. And what's going to do is going to give us an option to restart into safe mode. So yeah just restart that now. And this should take us and give us options to uh, boot into various different modes when it boots back up again. I hope, does it do the whole reboot thing again? If it does, I'm just going to fast forward the video. Or does it take us straight to boot? No, it's going to go through the whole boot sequence again. So, uh, back in a couple of minutes when it's actually gone through. Yeah, okay, so we're back onto the fourth reboot now. Here we go. So what we want to do is we actually just want to go straight. There's all these other different options about changing various bits, disabling drivers, etc. We're just going to go into safe mode. Okay. So let like that boot into safe mode. go through the full reboot sequence here. It's the uh, drives are flashing away, here we go, booting up to safe mode. Okay, normal lock control delete to get in. So we go just log it in now, so just waiting for it to come back up. Let's set this chair around so I can actually see what's going on. There we go, they've actually used this server for um, virtual desktop, which is why it's got a whole load of software and stuff loaded on it. Um, Couldn't get it to the drives, we haven't got network code and cables and onto this. So, what I'm going to do now, let's so boot back up. Go to control panel. Device menu. Scan 
the hardware changes. And we just check the storage controller, and yep, that has upgraded the storage controller now. So that's as simple as that. One out. Restart this. So that restart. Hopefully it doesn't go through the whole boot sequence again. If it does, I'll just pause this and we'll come back to it and boot it back up again. Now it's going to go through some more boots. So let me just let it boot up and I'll come back to you. Okay, fifth reboot we're on now. So yeah, we're just letting it boot up again. Now hopefully that blue screen message we got earlier has disappeared. It has going to save sort of grief later. Now when I did this previously, um, the next sequence I'm going to do is what I did first. And yeah, see this is booting up normally now. I haven't got the blue screen message yet. I replaced the drives first, I put the old drives back in, I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Um, and then tried to do restores and stuff like this, got all sorts of error messages, restored loads of times, tried different other troubleshooting stuff I found online. Um, none of that works, including you know, changing bits, rebuilding boot sectors, all this sort of stuff. Uh, this works every single time, this worked straight away. It made my life a hell of a lot easier and more speed, definitely speed up. I was, must have spent four or five hours trying to fix this earlier. So that's come up normally, perfectly normally. Um, obviously no network stuff, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna, let, let, I'm gonna log into that now and uh, shut it down so we can replace the drives. Yeah, okay, server boot back up as expected. These are the two drives we're going to replace. Um, there's actually six drive bays in here. Now this method won't work if you've got all six drive bays filled, filled up or you're going to replace four drives. Um, it just simply won't work. We're running in a RAID zero, 1 array. So basically these two drives are mirroring each other. So what we're going to do is we're move these two uh, existing hard drives next bays along and put the SSD drives in there. So literally just take these blanking plates out Push the button, pull the drive out, move it across to the next one. Make sure, is that locked back in place properly? Yeah, make sure that's seated properly, locked back in place. Now, actually, this would boot up perfectly, even though I've just moved the drive bays, it actually boot up perfectly normally if I wanted to do this. Um, so, these are the new 800 gig SSD drives. It's quite a substantial storage upgrade. So. Sit that back in there, make sure that's locked in place. Grab my second drive. So maybe asking why the hell aren't I just pulling these drives out and doing a normal restore, because we're actually going to do something slightly different that seemed to work quite well. Um, and I did it on the previous server, and it was actually a lot faster. Um, basically what we're going to do is clone this virtual array across this and create a new virtual array on these drives here. Um, Doing that because obviously in the same cabinet, it's a lot faster throughput. Doing that, it literally did it in about uh, 45 minutes to clone it. Whereas when I did the backup, the backup took about three hours to go through to the external drive, and you're probably looking at about a similar sort of time to actually restore it. Um, it's Sunday morning. I don't really typically want to be sitting around trying to do that. And if it's a quicker way of doing it this way, and because we've just done that boot to safe mode. We're not going to have the same. We'd have to do the same sequence again if we was to restore it, which is the problem we had previously. Spent absolutely hours then trying to recover, recover it. Um, so this method seems to work a lot better. So let me just move the camera back around so you can see the screen, and um, show you what you need to do to actually get this system working. Because basically, we need to build a an array on there, um, a virtual array on there. Boot it up using a um, some cloning software, which I'll show you how to do in a second, and um, then just clone the drive. So, hold on a second. Okay, so it's booting back up again. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go into the um, RAID controller software. So, we need Control E, Control R rather. 
takes us into RAID controller. So here's our existing virtual drive and these are the new drives here. So we need to create a new virtual drive first off. Go to the top. Always confusing, F2, the operations. Create a virtual drive. RAID 1. Select our new drive, whoops. Give it a name. Okay, that. Yep, gonna tell me we're losing the data. Go down to a new array. F2 again for operations and an initialize and we do a fast initialize. So if you do a full initialize, yeah it's gonna clean the drive down a bit better, but it takes an absolute age. So and it's Sunday morning and it's now almost eight o'clock, so um really don't particularly want to be here much longer, so that's the fast initialization done. So can okay, you now escape out of this? Yes. Right, control delete. Okay, let's go through the reboot sequence again. So it's going to go through the full reboot sequence again. Now it does take time, so. Come on. Yeah, configure in memory. Now, if you're a Dell software engineer, why the hell does this take so long to do? You know, surely you can speed this process up. I know it needs to check an awful lot of stuff. There should be just like a fast reboot from here now. Or only does this full sequence if you actually power it off rather than reboot. Now, if I was to do this full length video, it'd probably be uh, four times the length of this video. Just for these reboot sequences. Um, hopefully we can just fast forward this when it actually comes to publishing it. Now while it's booting up I've got um, some recovery software here, hard drive recovery software. I'm using Acronis um, for this. Uh, the actual drives were backed up using uh, Cloudberry but Cloudberry doesn't have a um, cloning option whereas Acronis does, so I've got an Acronis boot drive here. I'm going to shove that into the front USB port in the server where I'm waiting for this to boot back up. So here we go. Right, you want to go to the boot manager option, so F11, trim boot, and bias boot manager. So now it comes up with it's got two virtual drives. Absolutely brilliant, that's what we want. It does all its other checks it needs to do. Let's see the edge of the screen now. Let's move that around. Ever so slightly. Okay. Right. Now, when I first started you working with these Dell servers, this confused the hell out of me. I shoved a USB drive in, and it doesn't appear in the list. Yeah. Um, so you start scrolling through, and then when you go down to hard drives, it actually gives you then an option of what hard drives are available. So you can go with the integrated controller. If I did that, it would boot straight back off that other, the original um, RAID, RAID boot sector. So I'm just going to go to this USB device. You start in your Cronus. Okay. Might as well use the 64 bit version, let that boot up. Just wait while that loads that. Now, the drive wasn't backed up using a Cronus. Um, so it's backed up using Cloudberry. So I'm not going to do a recovery here. What I want to do is go to the tools and utilities here. 
and there's an option there, clone, drip, clone disk, so go to that. I'm not going to do automatic, because um, I don't want it to resize all the drives and stuff like this, I'm just going to go to manual, and then next. Now it's asking me, because we haven't initialised those other drives yet, you see the other drives I've put in don't exist? because they haven't been initialised yet, so don't panic at this stage because you haven't got the drive. So there's the USB stick, there's the original partition, select that, go to next. This takes a little while to run through, we'll like scan through trying to find what other drives and stuff we've got in this system. Now this other cloning software, drive cloning software you can use, probably does exactly the same thing as this. This Cronus is the one I happen to have because I'm using for backing up um, some individual PCs and stuff like this. We don't use them for backing up the service and stuff. Um, because of all the scheduling options and stuff like this. Yeah, it takes a little while. It takes a lot longer than you think it's going to take. Just checking the drives at the moment. You can't actually see this hard drive that too like stuff flashing like crazy on the front of the system, but the new SSD one's on because that partition's not been initialised yet. So it's scanning through trying to find oh, okay what we're gonna do with this. Let's source this. I'm just waiting for it to switch this destination disk bit here. Um, I think part of the reason this takes so long is because there are existing um, HDs rather than SSDs. Okay, come on. flashing now so so this can take a couple of minutes to go through hours and run for now it's seven minutes for this section go on. feel free to skip to the next section rather than waiting just to go through in fact I'll probably just fast forward this bit so you get straight to the bit you need to rather than sitting around like I've been doing here for eight years trying to wait for this to come back up Yeah, it's actually quite good software this, if you're actually looking to um, replace hard drives in things like laptops or desktops with SSDs, which a lot of people are doing nowadays, just rather than replacing a whole laptop just because it's got a slow hard drive in it, just bung an SSD in it and it speeds the whole thing up again. Um, worth while paying for a copy of a Cronus to do that drive imaging for you, to do the and future backups should you need to, don't think it's that particularly expensive for um, just a single user version. It's a 2017 version, I haven't used it for a, you know, probably a more up to date version of this, but that's the one I've got, so I know that works. What are we on now? Two minutes while it does this. Must be the end there now, I'll take it to about five minutes. Tempted to stop the camera at this stage, you don't need to go through. Uh, 
Um, and it was guaranteed since it's a stop button on the camera, it's going to go through. So uh, let's just do that anyway, just hit the stop button. Right, okay, that took a lot longer than we were expecting. So, yeah, I'll chop out a section of the video. Um, right, different options I can restore the target to. Obviously, I don't want to do it to the USB drive, it just simply won't fit. Um, don't, Acronis is quite good, I actually resize, provided you've got enough free space on the um, source drive, will actually resize to a smaller drive. I did this at home recently with a place to 2 gig um, HD drive with a 1 gig, 1 gig, sorry, 2 terabyte HD drive to a 2, to a 1 terabyte SD drive. Um, took a load of junk off I didn't need, basically got it into, so I had about 300 uh, Gig free, sort the drives over, put the existing HD into an external hard drive enclosure, um, and then just use this system to clone it and it resizes it. So we're not going to bother about that. This is why I'm doing it manually. You can do it automatically, you don't know, resize all the partitions. I want to leave the free space, I do. Yeah, so this is why I'm doing it manually. So that's the drive I want it to go to. Uh, so I want to do it as is. I'm not going to reproportion it. I'm not going to do it manually, I'm just going to do it as is. So the whole hard drives will be copied in the new drives in the current state. And the size is what we changed. That's what we want to do. Okay. Just confirming what's going to go on. What bits are going to be copied across. What we're going to get after. So you're going to get this large amount of unallocated space. and that's So we're going to click on proceed. And it starts copying. What I'm going to do is, because uh, this takes a little while, I'm going to, have to shut down when it's finished. So I need to shut it down anyway. I'm going to pull the other drives out. Um, so it's preparing. And we should get a little counter minute telling us how long it's going to take. So I'll just let it go through. It's like a recovery partition on every one of them. Uh, that's one of the bits and pieces as well. <coughs> and when it gets to the main partition, this is when you're going to get the countdown time. I can confirm that it is actually flashing away at the front. So we've got 58 minutes left, so it's going to take around about an hour. So the time is now 8.05, so we'll see how long it's just jumped up again. So long it actually takes, because there's this D drive, it did actually, this time jumped up and down an awful lot when I was, did the other server. Um, so you can just let that go through, I'll just hang around and get a drink, maybe get some breakfast or something while I'm waiting for that to go through. So, uh, see you in about an hour. Okay, so we're back. Uh, okay, what I'm going to do is just skip through there. I'll pop the um, older hard drives back out. So they're going to come up with an error now that uh, that we get here. C to load the configuration utility. Yeah, lots of text, yes. Right, text it into that, it just confirms that I've just popped the other two drives out so that other virtual controller doesn't exist anymore. Yep. That's the rate syncing up. So just OK that. I'll pull the link to reboot. And we'll just let it reboot again. So that wasn't recording. See, that's just booted back up again. I've taken the other drives out. Um, that's booted up normally. So I'm just going to take it off the desk, bug it back in the cabinet, and we're good to go. So, yeah, quarter past nine. So the whole thing's back up and running in well, just over an hour. Right, it's all the uh, server upgrade done. I've done all the testing and stuff like that. It's all working absolutely fine. So, it should be a faster logins and stuff now. Okay, 